Hey, give us a couple minutes. We're going to set up something I think is going to be just a little bit special than me just talking to you all morning long because, you know, I got 45 minutes today. So just get set in, get cozy. It's going to be an awesome morning. I'm just kidding. I don't have that long. But, hey, yesterday we talked a lot about highs and lows in high school. But there's one moment in high school that I don't think people pre- uh, prepare you for. Uh, and uh, you may think I'm dramatic. Your high school may look different than mine. That's fine. But there's moments of like, hey, prepare for your first dates, prepare for car rides, all the coursework, know where you are. Like we had lockers. You all, most of you don't have lockers, right? There's all these things that you have to prepare for. But there was a moment my freshman year. No one prepares you for. It's scary. It raises your anxiety. It's an adrenaline rush. It's a sprint. It's a walk. Your whole semester is decided in about 30 seconds to a minute. No one, no one ever talks about it. And actually, you might have experienced it this week, and it's called lunchtime. Okay? Because I don't know about your school, but this is the way mine worked. My school was like a giant crop circle. Okay? It was like circle, hallway, circle. And I'll never forget my freshman year, we're going to lunch, and, you know, there's a bunch of classes that get dismi- dismissed at once. And so I'm like... Okay, and so we start walking, then all of a sudden, you know, there's those kids, some of you are those kids, that just sprint down the hallway, right, and you're watching people go by you, and you're running in, and then all of a sudden, everybody swarms their table, and I don't know about your lunch, but my lunch, once you have your seat, you are stuck. Who you sit with, who you sit beside, that general area is yours, and if you go into somebody else's, you're just picking a fight. You know, and then some people, like, just stand there and wait and look at you and be like, bro, that's my seat. Right? It is a scary moment in high school when you go to get your lunch table because there you are for the rest of the year. But for most of us, what we try to do is at least try to get a couple friends. Even here, you're like, let me get my friends, sit with them. And what I noticed as I look back, the people that I sat with at lunch were just like me. Probably football players, sports, all that kind of stuff. That's the people that I always sat with. We had the same interests. We would talk about college football and all of those kinds of things. But today, we're going to talk about a table that looks just a little bit different. Because the table that we are going to look at this morning together is made up of people that don't look like you, that don't act like you, but are critical to the kingdom of God and what the kingdom of God looks like. And so today, we're going to read Psalms 23 again. And like we said, we want to stand up in honor of God's word this week. So stand up together. Stand up with me. I want to read this over you. And we're going to add a new verse. And that's where we're going to stick in today. All right, here we go. The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. And he lets me rest in green meadows. He leads beside me peaceful streams. He renews my strength. He guides me along the right path. He brings honor to his name. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid. For you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect me and comfort me. And this is where we're going to settle today. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. You honor me by anointing my head with oil, and my cup overflows with blessing. Go ahead and take a seat. Go ahead and close your eyes. I want to read just verse 4 over you one more time, because we cannot get enough of God's word. Let me just read this over you. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. You honor me by anointing my head with oil, and my cup overflows with blessing. God, would you allow your word to penetrate our heart this morning? May we see your table the way that you have designed it, and not anything else. It's in your name that I pray. Amen. Jesus not only provides and protects, but he also invites. He invites us to be a part of something greater. And Psalms 23 talks about the shepherd preparing a table and anointing his sheep with oil. Both of these revolve around the the idea of being promoted to a place of honor. We no longer have to tirelessly search for our meaning and purpose because Jesus invites us in and gives us the greatest purpose. 
Jesus isn't distant from us. He is near and he wants a relationship with us. That God prepares a feast for you and me. That he invites us to take a seat at his table. But you know, this isn't something that Psalms 23 just tells us. It's something that Jesus did throughout his entire ministry. That that Jesus was at the table with all kinds of people. Like in Matthew chapter 9, he's with Zacchaeus. Sorry, wrong person. He's, He's with Matthew and one of those disciples. That Jesus calls Matthew as a tax collector and he says, come and eat with me. Come and follow me, and then they go eat together that night. Matthew 10 says this, later that day, Matthew invited Jesus and his disciples to his home as his dinner guest, along with many tax collectors and other disreputable sinners. So what Jesus does is he invites all the people with the worst stories, the worst testimonies, all those people, and Jesus begins to eat with them. So much so that the religious leaders would look at that and they say, why do you eat with such scum? That's what he calls those people. But this isn't the only time. In Luke chapter 19, verse 10, uh, there's a story of Zacchaeus, this other tax collector that was a short, big jerk. Okay, He took money from people and he began to follow Jesus. But Jesus hollers out to him, says when Jesus came by, he looked up. Zacchaeus called him by name. Zacchaeus, he said, quick, come down. I must be a guest in your home today that once again Jesus comes to the table with people who we wouldn't think would be invited to the table that the son of the living God came and got the sinners he got the people that no one wanted to be around but that's not all the people that got to eat and interact and have a meal with Jesus you know something that we do every single week at our student services and at our adult services is communion You know, we take the little piece of bread and the cup of juice, the little wafer, the plastic, right? All that. That moment happens right before Jesus died on the cross. It's called the Last Supper. And he eats with his disciples. His best friends. The people that follow him. The people that love him. The people that care for him. And they eat one last meal together. But that's not the only time that we see Jesus again eat. There's actually this special moment that happens when Jesus comes back to life with Peter, and they're even, Jesus is preparing a fish for his disciples after he has came back to life. Again, Jesus invites people to the table. It's really unique that the God of this universe would come to this earth, and he would spend so much time at the table with people who loved him, And people that didn't love him, that actually, until they heard about him, would hate him. That that there's all these different people that that he spent around. But I thought this morning it would be really unique if we actually take a glimpse of what that table looks like today. Because I think sometimes we read scripture and we're like, yeah, but they got to interact with Jesus. And so what I want to do, I'm going to invite some of my friends up to just come take a seat at the table that we have set up because we want to get a little look of what this table looks like. So as you guys come up, take a seat around the table. It doesn't matter where. Give them a round of applause. Because as we look at this table, you can see people that are really nervous because they don't really want to be on stage. They don't like the, the sight, but that's okay. This is what Jesus' table looks like. And here's what I mean. Jesus invites us, no matter who you are or where you're from, that invitation that Marcus had last night is open to all people, no matter where you look like, your story, or your background. What I love, these people love Jesus. They care about Jesus. And these people, we're not going to be able to get into every one of their stories. I don't even know every one of their stories. But there's people around the room that if you follow Jesus and you've made a commitment to him, you are sitting at this table. And the beauty of the table looks like this. I do know Jeff. Jeff and I look different. Jeff is black. And I am white. Clearly. But that's the beauty of the table of Jesus is that we are invited, that we are encouraged that that is what the table of Jesus actually looks like. We have Matthew, who is a large human being, large Samoan man, looks different. He's from the West Coast. He's learning what Southern culture is all about every single day. Yes, people are really that nice, unless they say God bless. It's fake. 
But he's invited to the table, right? There's women that are sitting at this table that look alike and don't look alike. God's table is made up of people that don't look like you. And that's the beauty of God's church. Is that all people that decide to follow him and say, you are the Lord of this universe and that you have died for my sins, have been invited to take a seat at this table. In a world where they said, every reason you shouldn't be together, you shouldn't be. Actually, you should hate each other because of the things you look like because of where you come from, because of your history together. And Jesus just says, not me. See, he prepares the feast in front of his enemies to show how strong he is, that my people, the church, is greater than anything in this entire universe. But it's not just about what we look like. It's the stories and the lives that we have lived together that also make the table so special. That a table like this, there are plenty of stories where people maybe during their high school years spent some time doing drugs, maybe did the party scene. Maybe, maybe your story is something similar. If you sent one picture and then all of a sudden it changed the rest of your trajectory. Or maybe not that. Maybe you follow and love Jesus. And everybody looks at your story and thinks you have nothing special. But what people don't know about people that love Jesus and don't have that story that's like, I did drugs or I did all of these things and then I found Jesus and my life was transformed. See, those people continued to overcome adversity because they were challenged. And a lot of times you don't know this, but, but maybe they felt left out because when they get on their social media, they see all of these people doing things and they have chosen to step out so that they can look more like Jesus. And so instead of being with people, they're left at home alone, sad, lonely. There's people in, in this table right now that have sat in a group like this and felt absolutely lonely. There's people in this, on this table and in this room that follow Jesus that may not know their mom or dad. That actually got divorced as they were going through middle school or high school. Or maybe lost someone tragically. There's people at this table and in this room that follow and love Jesus. That have upbringings and that have faced challenges that I could have never imagined. But the unique. The unique part is, is they find themselves here at a table. They find themselves here, bonded together. Of all generations, of all different walks of life, of all different stories, I guarantee you there are other people that have your story that are currently sitting at the table of Jesus. So what we want to ask you this morning is this, that Jesus has invited you to be a part of his table. And we don't want to make any, any, any mistake here. We want to be clear with you. We don't clear coat. This is not your table. Jesus, the Lord, has prepared a table for you. It is his table, and he has earned that right by defeating death on a cross. And three days later, his resurrection is what saves us and what binds us and what brings us together. It is his table that we are invited to for new life and for freedom for his people. And that these people may look a difference because people are going to look around and say, why on earth would you sit together? Why on earth would you love one another? Why on earth would you do the things that you do for one another? It is because the people at this table know that God is supreme over all things. And their oneness in Jesus is above any other sports team, any political agenda, any upbringing that they were taught, anything else that Jesus binds them together. And that is the beauty of the church beautiful, it's gracious, it's powerful. And so this morning, where do you find yourself? And Jesus has invited you to his table because what he has done, because he loves you first. Are you sitting here? Are you sitting at the table with Jesus? But for some of you, you've been sitting at the table for a while. You understand what's going on and you love Jesus. 
So here's what we want to challenge you with this morning. There are still empty table chairs at the table of Jesus. That who are you inviting to inviting to this table that needs to experience the love and grace and freedom of a resurrected Savior, of a God who has a purpose for their life despite their mistakes, despite their upbringing, despite what they've done. That God wants to lead them to new life. That God might stir up in you someone that you need to invite to the table of Jesus. You know, what's so beautiful is this. Every single one of you that follow Jesus or don't follow Jesus in this room, there's similar stories. Even no matter what you think your stories is, in a room this size, it's different. But the beauty of Jesus is he brings us together. He makes us look different to our enemies. We are set apart from the culture by the way that this table loves one another because of the love of God that he set before us first. This morning, as you go to your quiet time, as you walk throughout your day, are you sitting here at the table that Jesus has prepared for you because he loves you and because he cares for you, no matter what you look like or where you come from, that actually diversity is what makes us strong physically or internally? Or on the other side of that, Students, you may have to have a conversation with somebody that's at camp. And just say, hey, you know, what's going on? I don't know. But this morning, would you decide if you want to sit at the table? And as we go throughout the week, if you want to make that decision that Marcus had last night, it's open all week. But the table's been set. You're invited. But will you come to the feast? pray together. God, thank you for preparing a table before us. God, we're grateful for what you have done for us. That God, it is by your death and resurrection that binds us together. That every student in this room knows that you have prepared a place for them. That they have a seat at the table that you have made for them. God, that is a gift that if we choose to follow you, that God, your body makes up the church. God, and we're so special that you have blessed us that we're actually one church at seven locations. But you, we find ourselves here, bonded together by you. And so God, would we be encouraged this week, whether it's a conversation with our small group leader or a moment of worship or a moment in our Selah time, that we might come take a seat that you have prepared for us. God, if we've been sitting at your table for a long time, God, we may be grateful and reminded of your goodness 